He can eat the box, but I still tell him we don't label that. I should call him Weezy, he be trying to see what baby at. B bitches think they really sending shots, but it be laser tag. If he running to me, CPS can't get your baby back. I can't be seen with no nigga TLC, we gotta creep. I say I only fuck with ballers, cause these ballers fuck with me. You Hi. Hey, how are you? Excellent. I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm excited to talk to you too. I've been nervous all day. I was like, ah, oh, nah, stop. Nah, nah. <laughs> Stop, stop. <laughs> so, can the man, so for everybody, uh, for your fans more importantly, I, I so you know who I am. I, I'm Brett Barish. I own a whole bunch of liquor band, brands, Bel Air, Bamboo, McQueen, Vion. Um, I, uh, can I, I get to do this? Uh, a few hundred people I've interviewed. I love it. It's called Self Made. Uh, everybody from Post Malone to Steve Aoki to, to, uh, uh, God, I don't know. A lot of people. A lot of and people. And I get to hear their story and I get to hear yours and reading about you and hearing about you. Um, I can't wait to see where you're going uh, because you're earning it. Um, but I, I won't talk for you. Tell, I start the same way with everybody. Tell me what self-made means to you. Um, self-made to me will mean like, you know, going there and get it without a handout not accepting no, uh, building from the ground up out the mud is what some would say. I feel like having a authentic come up too, you know, you have to, you really have to stay down for the come up because it's, it's really challenging to be self-made, I believe, because you are the one that's facing all of the obstacles, you know, like you're the one that gets kicked down, nobody else. So I just feel like that's what it is just by like, you know, Steady thugging it out and keep going till you get to the top. Did, did you, because at the end of the day, it, it's all about you. You're not in a mm -hmm. band, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it, you're putting yourself on the line. Did, is that a difficult thing to do, to put yourself out there for you? Um, yes, I guess in a way, because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like shy, like I'm like, very outgoing, but in the same breath, it's like I'm always hoping it's perfect and hoping that, you know, everybody likes it and all of that stuff. So it is, I feel like it's a little difficult getting out of my own head. Be, and I, I look at that as, and it, it, my come to Jesus moment was when I realized I got to stop asking opinion. Yeah. I got to stop trying to do everything that, that that's perfect. I just got to let it breathe. Do you Did you feel that? Like, just let it go, go try? I'm still going through it because me, it's like, well, my friends actually are my go-to. So I get all of my advice from them. And I know that they genuinely love me. So sometimes they're the ones that's like, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, just do it. And I, I get out of my head with them. So I, I feel like their opinions is always telling me, stop worrying about everybody else and just do it because you're great. Did, did So if, if you take me back, if you, what do you, as a little girl, what do you want to, What did you want to do? I wanted to be a doctor, but then when I got a little older, I was like, I don't like blood. <laughs> so I don't know how this can work out. <laughs> so. And when did when did music kick in? Um, I actually always my whole family, like my mom plays the drums, like my whole mother's side guitar band, singers, church choir, everything. So I have a very musical upbringing, but none, nobody raps. So it's kind of random <laughs> that I'm the only rapper in the family, but I grew up like going, doing talent shows and uh, I used to sing in choir and in talent shows. So I never, and I did poetry too, but I never did like poetry to where people snapping, none of that, but I've kept it in my room, you know, my poetry. So I've always did little things of like rhyming. So who, who entered, whose idea was it entering into contests as an example? Uh, into co a contest? Like like contests, so like putting you in, uh, giving you those opportunities. Was it your idea? Was your parents? No, it was actually my school. You know, they would just have talent shows, and it would always be like me and my friends. We always had little singing groups and all of this stuff. So it's like my, my dad is the person that's always just let me do what I want to do. I did nails. I tried to do um make clothes i've tried everything in the world he let me ruin his whole house experimenting with what i wanted to do so i guess it's like he always just followed whatever i wanted to do do, do you appreciate that absolutely because it gives i feel like it gives children room to like for trial and error 
Like it gives children room to expand, know what they, and you know, it's not like you're going to do this, you yeah. know, because that's when you're doing things that you're not. So it's like he allowed us to even find something we could be happy in. So I appreciate him for that. I always say it. He always let me do whatever I want to. And I think that's, I think it's critical. And I think it's, I think as an early age, you you, you want that go-to support, say, I want to go do this. Okay, go do it. Go mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. When did music, when did rap kick in? Um, I want to say like 2014. Wow. So it's still early. It's still, so what happened? <laughs> Um, I just used to freestyle in the car. I was like a major pothead when I was in high school. And of course, I couldn't smoke in my dad's house. So we would sit in the car. And then we would just rap because I don't know why marijuana make me want to rap, but it does. And I was just getting super high and I would just take a kick at it. And it sucked at first. I would only do like here and there, I'd say one word or two. And then I started going minutes and people was like, uh, you're getting kind of good at this. So it started there. I didn't start in the studio. I didn't. I don't even know what made me pick up the notepad and just be like, "Let me jot these ideas down." And so, when did when? Do you remember when you put something out there to let other people listen who don't know you? If you know what I mean. Yeah, it was. I would say 2014. I put my first. I did. Um, it's, it's a, it was a song with Nicki Minaj and D Herbo. It was called Chirac. So yep. the first thing I put out was a freestyle to Chirac. And then it went crazy. Like, Where'd you I guess put it? Where'd you put it? On SoundCloud. Because, you know, it was, it was free. It was a free service. I don't know. Who told me to get on SoundCloud? But I started dropping everything first on uh, SoundCloud. And what happened? What happened? It just went crazy. And I was just like, okay, I guess I'm pretty good at this. So I'm going to take another try at it. And then so I um, created like two more. Then after that, I got something strange. It was like I couldn't think anymore. But I didn't know it was writer's block. So the whole year, I just thought my career was over because I couldn't write for like a couple of days. So I gave up for a whole year. And they was just like, keep trying. Like, you too good. Keep trying. You too good. And I literally let a year go by before I created a mixtape. Then I made my first mixtape in two weeks. Off of what, what do you think? What do you think happened? What 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 was the block? I don't know. Probably like trying to outdo myself, maybe. Yeah. But I still get it to this day, and I really struggle with trying to outdo myself. That's what I. That's what I am. Like I always am in competition with myself. Like I always want to outdo this record. Or I always want to outdo this verse. So maybe it's overthinking is my thing. Because I'm a big over. I'm a very big overthinker. It is. It, it, and, and, but it also sounds like you haven't figured it out yet either. Hmm? It also sounds like you haven't figured that out yet. No, I don't know what the, because I still get it heavy. But now I know, don't give up on your career. It's just writer's block. <laughs> so, so after a year, then what happened? Um, I seen a Nicki Minaj documentary and she was on there crying. I started crying. <laughs> I was just like, I really want to rap. What's wrong with me? Literally. That documentary, I think, pulled me out of my head, and I realized that that was the first thing that I was ever passionate about. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to try again. I'm going to keep trying. So I listened to a bunch of Lil Wayne, and I wrote my mixtape. Do, do you still – and to me, it's no different than me talking to you today or talking to Lil Wayne um, uh, or Wiz on Self Made. I need other people to get motivated. It sounds like you're the same in the sense of it, you get inspiration from others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it, like Lil Wayne is one of my biggest pull. Like I pull from him the most because every time I feel like I'm not going as hard, I listen to him because he's a he's an artist. He's my favorite rapper. For those who didn't know, uh, he always make me push my brain into like, okay, don't say it as simple as that. Like he wraps his ways around like digging in and he talks about something, but it's like, it's weird how he flips it. So I always listen to him to get like new bars, like not his exact bars, but just like how to play with words. So he's somebody that definitely can pull me out of like a block. I listen to a bunch of him, but it's like, I know everything. So I'll be trying to find stuff that I've never heard because I find myself rapping his lyrics instead of like listening to what he's saying. Got it. (laughs) Who else gives you inspiration? Um, I feel like, okay, so my favorite rappers are Lil Wayne, Nick Minaj, Eminem, and Tupac. Wow. So, yeah. You got the two groups. You got it split. 
they're in their camps. Yes, I, I love, and I love Drake too. Uh, but yeah, so I feel like the inspiration that Nicki Minaj has, I would say is like, she took hip hop to a whole new level to me. Like she didn't just do this hard, grimy music. It's like, she showed that you can rap on pop. You can rap on rock. You can rap on this. You know what I'm saying? And it, like, I, I listen to that type of music. Like, my me growing up, my whole time, me burning CDs off of LimeWire. Hope we can't still go to jail for that. I always had a mixture of music on it. So it's like, I've always wanted to do more than just singing or in, like stuff like that. So when she started getting on pop records, it was just like, you, it's like you know you can do it, but you just don't know that you can do it. Like rapping on a pop record is kind of like. Strange. If I said to you uh, that some, if I said where where did can the man take rap music? What would your answer be? Where did I take it? Yeah, I feel like what I've told myself is no matter how big I get, I will always be ratchet. And I feel like that's something that I've been, that's something that I am, that's something that I enjoy partaking in. So I just feel like I would take it to where whatever lane, whatever genre I experience in, I'm going to always be runchy, ratchet, and real. And that's what I always wanted to be. And I've always told myself that the rapper that I wanted to be, I didn't want to be the same person on every track. I want to allow the beat in me to intertwine. Like, I don't want to say like, oh, she bringing the same thing. She's saying the same flow on this beat as this beat and that beat or, you know, saying the same thing. I've always wanted to like, let the beat drive me to a place versus me. Like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I do. versus me, yeah. Is it you, Is it? does that also mean that you have to evolve constantly? Absolutely. You have to, one thing that I don't understand that artists say is like, you can stay yourself and also, you know, change in a way. It's not like really changing. It's just kind of like floating and you, you just get with the program because at the end of the day, it's money in getting with the program. Like it's money in like, you have to not just make music for yourself. I feel like when you're gaining like support and all of these people, you also have to like give them what they want too. So it's like, it's all in a balance of staying true to yourself and staying current because at the end of the day it's a money game and i feel like a lot of people don't realize you have to grow with your you know do, do you think how do you describe your fans could you pick them out in a lineup oh yeah they can pick me out they probably rap it they be screaming and rapping at me um they they're really i really appreciate my support because they watched me from here to here to here, you know? So it's like, you know, a lot of artists, I feel like don't, well, I guess all artists kind of grow with, cause you know, it's always somebody watching you from here and you just yep. don't see them maybe yep. to where you get here. So I feel like it's amazing at how they stay down when it's not clout attached to my name. And I appreciate them for like appreciating me for actual good music, not just clout and not just popularity. It's really like we love Ken, you know? And, and and that's what I love about someone like you is, to me, your fans are the most realest fans right now because yeah. it's not Lil Wayne. They're, yeah. They love you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. When, when I read this about 2 Chains bringing you up and mentioning you and bringing you up on stage, like, why was that a moment? Because it's, it was so strange. It's like he didn't even know me and for him to got give me that chance like i was telling him that i was like it's crazy that nobody in my own city even let me touch that stage that is a legendary stage you know yeah. so it's kind of like something as big as that for you to not know me you just be like you're talented i want to see i want to i want to see you in your city like and it was it was i was like i can't believe you did that like it's crazy to me and it was so random too it was like i didn't expect to go on the toyota center's stage with two chains like he's two chains like it's, it, is is that a do, it doesn't surprise you when you still have moments like that where you're like this is surreal absolutely i'm surprised every day i wake up and my friends be like who are you <laughs> like what's going on who are you like what like it's weird to watch like my dad tell tell me all the time like, do you know, Kentavia, that people don't even make it out the studio? And I was just like, I know, Daddy, look, look at me. I'm on TV. I'm doing <laughs> My son, 
I had the live stream up. I told my son to watch my Rolling Loud performance on live stream. And he, he called me as soon as that. He said, Mama, I see you on TV. <laughs> Like, that's so cute. So it's crazy and like unreal for everybody around me. Because I'm so normal. I'm such a normal person. What were just and again, because I'm a big fan of moments, what were the you know, you putting a song on SoundCloud and seeing the reaction, what were the other between then and two chains, what are the other moments that just felt you know, I was give me an example. I was during COVID, I went grocery shopping for my mother. I was in a grocery store at 9 p.m. looking for sardines. And, I, <laughs> and a woman came over to me and she's like, you love bamboo, I love bamboo. And I forgot I'm wearing a bamboo mask. Mm. You know, and like even that little thing just made me so happy. Like, what are your, what are the moments that have taken you? Um, I feel like as an independent artist, it was a lot of things that people told me you're going to need this. You're going to need that. You know, you're going to, you can't do this. Oh, you, it's gatekeepers. You're not going to be able to do this. And when I did it, it's like, what if I would have listened to them yep. and just was like, fuck it. I don't, I don't know about this. You know, it's like, I've always rebelled against anything, anything somebody told me that I couldn't do. I made sure I did it because it was kind of like, how are you going to tell me? Like, if it ain't flying, which we could do it in the plane, you know, I know. I can't grow wings on my back yet, but it's like, you telling me I can't do something that I'm looking at every day, you know, like that I'm in. So I just feel like I would say it's a plethora of things like me stepping on Rolling Loud stage four times, like me being on the radio, me dropping a project and them playing my whole project on the radio at 5 p.m. in five o'clock traffic, uh, me going viral pretty much my very first single outside of the freestyles you back my bad you're back you're back go ahead can you still hear me i can hear you perfectly okay okay so the um i was saying me my first single that i've ever dropped outside of soundcloud it went viral it had over a million views so things like that just always kept me like you know i can do this i can do that i've, I've never been stagnant i feel so no matter like how if, even if it's a baby step a crawl everything means the world to me because it's a step that i wasn't yesterday it, 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 what was signing with asylum like considering you have been so independent for so mm -hmm. long Yes, it was crazy because it started me managing myself for years. Then I met Melissa. She was managing me for two and a half years or a year and a half, almost two years. Then we just turned down everything. So we, we, we didn't like it. Nothing. I told her she I, she told me that I taught her something because I just was like, I ain't signing no fuck shit. Like, that's not what I'm doing. I'm not all these years I've been rapping. I wish I would sign a deal and be trapped and be puppeted and changed and all of this stuff that I don't represent. So when I, we finally, it was like asylum came, it was like my Christmas present. They came around Christmas and I was just like, okay, awkwardly, I like these people, Melissa. And they asked me like, Ken, what do you want? So yeah. it was kind of like, wow, this is a first. This is like, different. Yeah. This is, this is people that are not trying to tell me, well, this is what we're doing and this is what's not happening. And it, and it was perfect because I was just like, this is my speed. This is something that, Ken is comfortable with and they all they kept their word I don't know why my phone keep going black they kept their word they never tried to make me do anything I don't want to they always be like can't get a boss it's up to you can't get a boss it's up to you and that's all I wanted to do was be the boss of my own career because I feel like it takes your creativity when you're pulled the direction you don't want to be pulled is is Cantavia and Ken the man the same person I feel like, yeah, we both born. We both like watching movies and snacking and um, sleeping and laying in the bed. <laughs> Before shows, I take naps for people that ain't know. Like, I'll take a 30-minute nap if I can. It, 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 but d d being on stage, uh, freestyling, uh, is Ken the man some... Is it feel like you're doing you're somebody do you feel like you're a new persona and you got a mask on and you can you can you can rap and wordsmith as much as you want? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I'm the same person really on and off the stage. It's like I'm like this to my friend. Like if you when we go to hotel rooms, you know, usually for shows and stuff with my team, you know, usually people will go to the club. We sit in the room, we do talent shows. 
we we do talent shows. We do competitions. I see one of my friends. Oh yeah, she's talking about in racing, and I we whoever can stay on their head longest, who can hold their breath the longest, who can be the best. Like we had a talent show, and I was the opera singer. Melissa, my manager, was me. It was like we do. Like we, I'm always in some kind of. I've always been a character. I feel. It, um, I, correct if I'm wrong, but he be like, you did not think that was going to be a hit. Mm -mm. I didn't. That, I, go ahead. No, I, I was just about to say I didn't. Why? I don't know. It's because do we ever know? Like what? What is gonna be? So, um, I I knew that it was a good song because me personally, I never, I never make something or put something out that I think is complete shit. That's not something that I do. So it takes me a little longer sometimes to create my music and put it out because I really overthink it. I rewrite it. I change it. I do all of this stuff. So it's it was just one of the, another song, another moment that I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna put this out. Like I didn't even have a video out for it for a year. And I, I couldn't keep up with it. It was moving too fast. It's crazy. It went up like viral without even having a video. D does it, and I, you know, in talking to a lot of artists, and I could say the same thing for even what I do for a living, um, sometimes you can't overthink it. You just got to put it out there. Mm -hmm. Does that teach you something? The fact that, that something that you don't think is going to be huge, you know what? I got to just let it go. Yeah. I, um, I'm okay. I'm kind of, I'm up and down with it because sometimes I feel like I pass up on things that my friends been telling me to drop for like two years. But then I guess I haven't learned my lesson because I have this one I've been holding on for two years and I'm finally getting it together. So I just want to see like, if this song changed my life, I'm going to be so mad because I waited two years. To two years. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So I don't know. T to me, it's, you know, it's like you said, you've got to evolve and just let it go and see what happens. Yeah, just let it fly. Ken, tell me, because I love the, uh, I, I love the struggle side of, I'm talking to you because you're somebody, but you, you had your own struggles, whether it's, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I love the Uber stories and the DoorDash stories, but mm -hmm. that's not long ago. Like, mm -hmm. what's that like? What's that like to want? I want to sing, but this is what I got to do to get there. What's that like? You know what's crazy? It's like back then when I was doing things, I never thought that I wanted to make a career in it. When I first put out, I would say, okay, so I started dropping stuff like 2014. I've been dibbling and dabbling. But when I finally was like, this is what I want to do, it was when my single in 2017 went viral. And it's always, still to this day, it's a question of like, I was just on the phone with my role manager and I was like, what's next? Like, what do, what do I do to, you know, to keep it, to keep it like, cause it's like, yeah, I drop music. It's good music. It's quality. I drop videos. It's quality. So it's like, what do you do next? So I still feel like I still just am taking it day by day and learning so many new things because for me, TikTok is in. And I am so afraid of TikTok. I don't know what to do on TikTok. And it's just like, everybody's like, get on TikTok, make a TikTok, do TikTok. So I'm just like, Lord, like, I'm trying to figure out a way to do this with still doing it my way. And it's Your like, way. It's, it's a challenge every day, like, being an artist. You just don't know. Even I feel like with established artists, too. It's like, okay, yep. I'm, a little, I'm a little older now. Well, how do I stay current and relevant and, and keep the kids attached? And, you know, so it's, I feel like we just take it day by day. So who who do you look for? Uh, forget the music, but for let's call it the the business side or the brand building side because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Who do you, who do you look to out there that you see is you know what I like the way they're rolling. I like the way they're moving. I really like how Summer Walker rolls. I like how Saweetie rolls. Yep, um, they roll so good. Like it's it's like it make you like I can't wait till midnight. I cannot wait to download this Summer Walker album because. She done had the little beat boxes, the glasses, where you're trying to get the, the hard drive. And it's just, I always uh, tell my team, I tell them, I'll be like, okay, so I'm boring as fuck, right? So it's just like, I sometimes I don't feel like doing all of that. But I was just like, okay, if I just put a box somewhere randomly and let somebody beat it down, I can lay in the bed while I watch them do that. So <laughs> I just was like, I really admired those 
I'm sure I'm missing some people, but it, it is people that they're super. Oh, you know who? I don't know about rollouts, but Doja Cat, totally yeah. creative to me. Like, I love it. Like, that's the type of level that I aspire to be on. Is that type of because I'm I'm very extra like that in my mind. I'm just too lazy, so I want to be able to just hire people to do it and to help you get there. Yeah, <laughs> is what's take we're all, almost at the end of 21 what does 22 look like what are the goals what do you want to do what do you want to achieve um i just really want like millions of dollars um i want to retire my dad i would like to um private school my son and make sure he can be homeschooled because he hates school kind of like me um, I just want like success and I've said this before, like success to me is not popularity. Yep. It's um it's just a sense of comfort in your own place. Like I want my family to be comfortable. Like I want I wanna know that all these years my daddy put in in the sun and, and just raising us like by himself and stuff. I just want him to be able to relax and be able to take a breath, you know, and not have to raise his kids anymore, you know, but like I'm I want to take care of him. So it's just, it's just when, being successful. When you, when you told him, I want to be a, a, a singer, what did he say? He, like I said, he's always believed in me. It's like, he, uh, he used to sit, we used to um, have to, I used to go to a babysitter. Her name was Miss Carter. So when he would work, me, my brother would go to the babysitter. And so it was like a 35, 40 minute drive to home when he would pick us up. So he used to put on the fighting temptation soundtrack and he used to tell me, if you don't sing this song, I'm going to put you on punishment. <laughs> so he's always believed in anything that I put my mind to. So when I started to rap, it was just like another. He, he was selling my mixtapes at his job. Wow. Like, yeah. I never seen the money, but he sold them. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, are, did you have a moment, And because I had it, where, you know what, it, it the it's not about the money. I'm loving what I'm doing. Oh, absolutely. Every day because I was dirt broke when he be like came out. I was doing it for love. I've always done it for love. That's why it's like, you know, I love money. <laughs> Don't get no, me wrong. <laughs> but it's like, you know, we have to get money to live life. But I 100% that's I've never stuck at something this long ever. It is. Are we going to see a two chains Ken the Man song? <laughs> Absolutely. He better do it. He better give me a Ken the Man two chains. We got to get that. Who else would you love to work with? Summer Walker. I would love to work with Lil Dirk. I would love to work with Drake, Nicki Minaj, Cardi B. Um, who? Who you? Uh, uh, give me a DM that you were shocked that hit you, and said, "I love what you're doing. Keep doing it." I think I was shocked at. I would say Ari Lennox. Summer Walker did, she posted, he'd be like before too. But Ari Lennox, it was just like, okay, girl, you like this nasty shit, all right? I fuck with it. That was shocking to me. You know, my daughter and I have a thing, because uh, my daughter and all her friends are always like, she be like, she, she says, she be like. She be like. Okay. Can we get a she be like? You know what? I wanted to do a remix with Young and May. And I wanted to name her the name and she be like, but I never met her, so. Oh, I'll make that happen. We'll make right. that happen. Right, we need to we'll bring it back happen. up. We'll make <laughs> that happen. I think it would be so dope. I feel like it's fair. We'll make that happen. Um, <laughs> what Did you have fun at our office? I saw the pictures and the images. I saw you win in the claw machine. I won of, two times. Yeah. They talk, when I won the first time, before I did it, they were like, you could take another trial. I said, I'm lucky. I got this. I got and this. I and I won it and I did it and Melissa was like you didn't even get me one and I was just like I got you so I got two and it's actually back there. There you go. You got to keep the trophies. Keep yeah. the trophies. <laughs> I got so much Bel Air, Lord. So did much. you have fun at the office? Yes, absolutely. We were drinking. They gave me the the creamy one and I just drank some creamy one. The creamy, the creamy. Oh, bamboo cream. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I just drank some this morning. It was so strong. I was like, I'm getting beside myself. Let me back it up a little bit. A little I bit. love it. And my understanding is that your favorite's Lux Rose, no? Um. <laughs> oh, love it. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> yes. See, 
These, the thing about, I really like the villain. The own, the own. Yeah, that one is smooth. Drink it straight. Be careful. It'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll get you every time. I love it. So, um, uh, what's the next music for you? You just put out something great. You're happy with it. What's next? I want to do a deluxe. Okay. And oh, I forgot I was on live. See, I was going to keep that as a secret. But yes, I've never done a deluxe and I really want to do a deluxe because like I said, I'm always feeling like I'm unfinished. So I was just like, I don't, you know, I don't want to rush past my project. I want to like push it, you know, keep, you know, like artists, we got to push it. Sure. We can't drop. So I was just like, since I can't drop nothing else, I need to make a deluxe or something so I can sneak some new tracks in there. So I, I, I want to give a shout out to my team and I love my team. So I'm going to ask you, what does someone like Melissa mean to you? She's my heart. That's my baby. I love her so much. It's like, she's like my momager. Seriously. Mm. Because like, she's not the person that's like work, work. She always be like, can she told me, she just told me, she was just like, make sure you take Christmas off. Cause I'd be working. <laughs> she's like, she can't. I, I love my manager because she cares about my well-being like she's not just like oh yeah we gotta go get the bag which we all want the bag but it's like she really care about me and that's what stood out to her uh, stood out to me was in her was that she actually cared about me like nobody really noticed but we were going on these like um i guess people were trying to um sign me or whatever so they yeah. were trying to have these meetings and all of this stuff so we went to this, these meetings and we had a press run, just me and Melissa. And actually the day before our press run, after our meeting, we got into a head on collision in, in, Los, in Los Angeles. And she put her arm out instead of protecting herself to make no. sure. Yes. And I was just like, you my bitch forever. That's, oh, you can't let that go. That's yes. awesome. Yeah. It was bad too. Like she had to get like some stuff in her spine, like in the back oh. of her neck. Yeah. It was a bad accident. And then I, we was like, yep, we locked in. Oh, that's we the test. Stuff. And then that's the, the next man day, test. the next day we still had to go on our press run. So she rented a car. I was just like, oh God, you're so hard working. I would have had to take the day off. So when I get off this call, I'm going to hit Mac Maine and Lil Wayne. So what do you want to tell them? I love you, Lil Wayne! Fair enough. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, you know, when, when I first heard about you and your name, I just love it. Because to me, the name says it all. It just means it's power. Uh, and I just, I don't know, I just, the fact you're... Ken the man, I just, I love it. I love it. Okay. To me, it's inspirational. To me, it tells a story. To me, it's there, there's more you want. I, I just think it's. Were there other were there other names in the running for you, or just that was it? It was gonna be Ken, but like I said, I started on SoundCloud, and you know, of course, Ken wasn't available, so I had to spice it up a little bit. And thank God that I spiced it up with that because I never would have. It just was like. Just like when I named my son, somebody asked me the other day. What, no, he asked me. He was like, "What did you think of that name?" I was like, "I don't know. I just thought about it." <laughs> you know, I didn't think I didn't get it from anywhere. So it was like really a blessing in disguise because it does represent everything I stand for. I feel like I feel like if you listen to my music, I'm talking about girl stuff, but it's such like it's so it's such dominant energy. Correct. Like it's, you know, it's like um, I'm so feminine. Yes, I have that masculine tone. You know, to where it's like a guy can listen to it and don't get annoyed with my voice it's almost like oh who is that she sounds sexy but but for me and i'm a brand guy it's it's a brand meaning it's yeah. its own brand it's its own yes. story it's its own rhythm it's got uh you want to know more and i think that's a powerful statement Get your nigga back, mm, give me that Nigga playing with my money, it can get your cherry whack I don't fuck with rap, bitches, mm, bitches very whack Call me Asian cause I really 